when it comes to Bhutan, I don't think there is any other country like Bhutan in the world because there's a very strange phenomena going on there. It's because um, our leaders of the past realized how fragile, unique our cultural heritage and our spiritual traditions were. So they, early on, early in the century, they decided that Bhutan would exist almost like in a cocoon, uh, protected and self-isolated from the rest of the world. Uh, and it was only, the, the change only came in the 1990s, while the rest of the world embraced uh, everything that, uh, you know, was uh, synonymous with modernization and globalization. Bhutan still self-isolated. Uh, so uh, it was only in the late 1990s, 1998 to be exact, that Bhutan decided that it would become a democracy. We decided to allow television for the first time. We decided to allow the internet into the country. So you can almost imagine how all that uh, happened. Because prior to 1998, um, the yak herders in Bhutan, like the people in Lunana, they lived almost oblivious to what was happening outside their snowy peaks. And with that came, you could say, a, a great sense of contentment. But now, because we live in a world that has to do a lot with um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, television, uh, a lot of the people in Bhutan are aware of the world that is there beyond our mountains. And with that, I guess you can say, there's a, you know, a loss of contentment. So in this movie, Lunana Ayak in the Classroom, uh, I created the character of Ugin based on the youth of Bhutan. Um, the, the, most of the youth of Bhutan are just like Ugin. They are very restless. They look beyond Bhutan, wondering what the outside world has, you know. And, uh, but that being said, uh, but you also have to remember things of the modern world has even reached and penetrated uh, you know places like Lunana uh, you know uh, in, in the movie you will notice that the girls the ladies all wear like this shawl and actually I put that in the movie because um, those that shawl tradition is disappearing now it's replaced by um, cheap uh, Chinese jackets that come across the border and there's only now one old lady in the entire village who knows how to make weave that uh, that shawl. But that being said, um, I feel like um, modernization is a double-edged sword here. Of course, it has uh, its uh, it uh, pro, you know it gives Bhutan a lot of challenges because uh, you know um, the people get more information, they can see what is outside the world, outside Bhutan. And with that comparison usually comes, they lose that contentment. And uh, that's sad. But when I mean, what I mean by a double-edged sword is that we can use what modernization gives us to try and preserve our culture and our traditions. For example, take this movie, you know. Uh, this movie was only a, you know, only uh, made because of uh, the tools of modernization. And because of the tools of modernization, it's reaching across to places like Braunschweig. So, which I think is, it's, you know, we should embrace modernization. Modernization can be embraced to, uh, you know, ensure that our spiritual traditions, cultural heritage is uh, protected and uh, passed on to the next generation. Um, the thing is, um, most Bhutanese youth, as I said earlier, uh, they almost look beyond the mountains of Bhutan into the modern Western world, and in this case, Sydney, Australia, with almost a sense of fascination and awe. 
because uh, these places represent um, in a way what they desire the glittering lights you know the modern city uh, metropolitan cities um, urban centers concrete jungles uh, and in a way that has really captured the fascination of the Bhutanese youth and a lot of people uh, I, I, I created the character of Ugin because a lot of Bhutanese leave their homeland, leave their family, leave their uh, stable jobs behind to find jobs in other countries and for now the trend is Australia and uh, as I said earlier, Australia and the cities represent like this glittering, uh, well-lit urban center. So people go on this journey uh, to almost uh, uh, seek out their sense of happiness. And I was very interested in, um, in, in for the movie to create another journey. And in this case, a journey at the opposite end of the spectrum. If the youth, if the protagonist desires urban, modern, glittering lights to seek out his happiness, what if we take him to the most remote part of Bhutan, which is Lunana? And uh, Lunana is so far, it is the most uh, remote, the most cut off uh, region in Bhutan. So much that even the name Lu Na Na actually means the dark valley because uh, Lu Na Na has always been known as a place that is so far off, so cut off that we think it's always dark. Uh, so I was interested to see if the protagonist would be able to find what he seeks in Lu Na Na, you know, if he would be able to find what he seeks in the urban centers in the cities in the modern places of like sydney will he be able to find it in uh, lunana um, of course uh, making the movie in lunana was a big challenge no electricity no showers no proper food no house and we lived up there for uh, two and a half months but uh, i think uh, more than just creating a movie uh, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity for all the crew members including myself to be in such a special place and I feel all of us went through the same journey that uh, Ugin went through so all of us kind of um, had a, you could say a, a sense of realization of our culture and uh, the beauty of our land so yeah <laughs>
but um, uh, the more I learned about her life, the more inspired I was because she comes from a broken family. Um, she has no mother. Uh, she lives a life in poverty with her father who is always drunk. Uh, but uh, I wanted to cast her in the movie, but she's never been out of Lunana. So she, she's never seen a film before. She doesn't know what cinema is. She's never seen a camera in her life. So what I did was, um, I basically put her character into the movie. So I made her character basically come from a broken family, drunk father, no mother. So in a way, what I was telling her was not to, be, not to pretend to be someone else, but I said, here, you see this camera? I want you to just live your life, you know. Tell us about your life to this camera. So a lot of times these first time actors aren't acting. It's almost like a documentary where they are telling their own life stories uh, to us. So much so that in the last scene when the teacher leaves Lunana, um, Penzam, she wasn't acting. She, she really cried because in her real life, the only person who provides guidance, support for her are her teachers. So in the movie when she had to go through the scene where her beloved teacher was leaving Lunana, she, uh, I didn't even have to tell her what to do. Uh, she, 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 those tears in the, the last scene, those are all real. Uh, so um, I think a lot of magic comes through trying to capture people as they are. I think the shooting of this movie in Lunana was probably the biggest event there ever was in Lunana. <laughs> so it wasn't very uh, difficult to get them to join us. In fact, uh, we had to, you know, um, try to keep them at bay so they don't like, uh, there's not too many people on, on, on the set. Um, Lunana, as I was saying earlier, is so remote. Actually, in the movie, we made it a seven, eight days walk, but it's actually a two-week walk. Uh, it is one of the most difficult places to go to, difficult places to live in. But the amazing thing is, these people, they have the option of living in the cities, in the urban places where life is easier. But they choose to live up there. And, uh, you know, they kind of represent the people of Bhutan prior to the opening up. So in a sense, there's a lot of innocence, uh, a lot of warmth. Uh, when they see new people, they don't judge. They, they look at people in a very pure way. So, you know, we be, the village has only, as you saw in the movie, uh, 56 people and our crew had about 38. So when we got there, I was worried about how they would accept us. But they were so welcoming, you know. They opened up their houses, they opened up their uh, lives to us, opened up their hearts to us. And it was a very, very beautiful experience. And actually, um, our plan was uh, that we will walk back up with the movie. And you know where the kids were dancing with the snow mountains? Uh, we were going to have an outdoor screening of the movie up there. Um, we left our generator up there, so uh, we will use that to have an outdoor screening of the movie. Uh, I feel like then it's a full circle uh, of the whole journey of making this film. Uh, definite yes. Um, as I was sharing with you all earlier, uh, what's happening in Bhutan is very unique. We have this ancient land with a lot of tradition, culture, spiritualism uh, that has been closed up for centuries, suddenly opening up and embracing uh, modern modernization, globalization. And this juxtaposition of traditional and striving to be modern creates this amazing backdrop uh, for the most amazing stories that are unfolding and as a storyteller like myself uh, there's wherever I look there's just so many different inspirations 
So definitely, um, I hope to make more movies and share more stories about my beautiful country and culture with the rest of the world.